In this video, I'm going to talk about how to write a conditional statement. So what I'm going to do here is take a couple of, take a couple of sentences and write them as a conditional statement. Now, as a reminder, a conditional statement is your if then statement. Usually the if part, um, in this video, I'm going to say that the if part is going to be underlined with a single line and then your then part is underlined with a double line kind of show you where the, the, the if part, the hypothesis of a conditional statement is, and also show you where the then part is, which is the conditional, uh, excuse me, the uh, uh, conclusion part of the statement is. Okay, so I'm going to write a conditional statement for each of the following. I got a couple of examples, one on this page and one on the next. Okay, so this example, I have an obtuse triangle has exactly one obtuse angle. Okay. So I have, I don't know, if, um, you might need a picture. You might, you might need a picture to kind of help you out with this. So there's my obtuse angle. There's an obtuse triangle. If I really wanted to, I could say that this is 153 degrees. Okay, there's an the obtuse triangle. Kind of give you a visual of what we're talking about here. Okay, an obtuse triangle has exactly one obtuse angle. Okay, so as I go through this, I can kind of, I can kind of start to see the if part and the then part. And maybe it's actually, it might, might actually be easier to see what the conclusion part, the then part of the sentence is. An obtuse triangle has exactly one obtuse angle. So as you, as you read through this, has exactly one obtuse angle, that's kind of a conclusion. That's kind of a bold statement there to say that an obtuse triangle, this is, this is what it has, this is what it is, is exactly one obtuse angle. That right there is kind of a conclusion part of the sentence. So that's, that's what's going to help me here, has exactly one obtuse angle. That right there is what I'm going to use for my conclusion. Therefore, at the beginning here, an obtuse triangle, an obtuse triangle is going to be kind of my hypothesis part. So what I want to do is I want to try to write this as an if-then statement. Okay, but now when you write this, you got to use your English skills, you got to use your sentence structuring skills that you learned in English class to try to write this as an if-then statement with a with a blatantly apparent hypothesis and a blatantly apparent conclusion. So here we go. In this case, what, what are we talking about? In this case, I'm talking about a triangle. So that's where, I, that's where I'm going to start. If a triangle, if a triangle, now notice I'm not, I'm not just repeating words. I'm not just taking chunks of a sentence and just rewriting it. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm writing a totally new sentence using bits and pieces from this. Okay? So if a triangle is obtuse, if a triangle is obtuse. So I'm not saying an obtuse triangle. I'm saying, okay, if I have a triangle and it just happens to be obtuse, that is my hypothesis. Then, okay, then it, okay, now the it part is referring to the triangle, okay? I don't have to, I don't have to repeat, I don't have to say, then the triangle is blah, blah, blah. I can just say then it, because I've already stated what my subject is. If a triangle, so then it refers back to the triangle. Anyway, then it has one obtuse angle. If a triangle is obtuse, then it has one obtuse angle. Hypothesis is the if part, conclusion is the then part. There we are. So that is how you write a conditional statement. Now, conditional statements can be difficult to write because you're not sure how to take each piece of the sentence and write it legibly, no, not necessarily legibly, but write it so that it's understood. Okay, I didn't want to write if an obtuse triangle, that just doesn't really make a sense, that doesn't flow very well. If an obtuse triangle, that, no, that doesn't, that doesn't work. If a triangle is obtuse, that, that's, that, that flows a lot better using English, that flows just a lot better. If an angle is obtuse, then it has one obtuse angle, then it has one obtuse angle. Okay. Now, I didn't use the exactly part. You probably could have, used, you kind of could have thrown that in there. Then it has exactly one obtuse angle. That could have worked, but um, it wasn't necessarily a needed part of the sentence, I felt. Okay. So anyway, that is writing a conditional statement. There's a sentence that we had, and we just wrote a conditional statement using that. Okay, so let's do another example. Got another example over here. And this time I have a Venn diagram 
to kind of help me out with this. What? Okay, so I'm, again, I'm writing a conditional statement. Write a conditional statement for each of the following. So again, we're writing an if-then statement. My if is going to be my hypothesis, and the then part is going to be my conclusion. Okay, so now birds and blue jays. Hmm. Birds and blue jays. So if you understand what a Venn diagram is trying to tell you, it tells you that blue jays are birds, but birds don't necessarily have to be blue jays. Okay? Notice that blue jays, all of my population of blue jays, they are birds, but notice all of my birds that I have, parts of them, like this piece up here, this piece over here, this piece of birds over here, they are not blue jays. Okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of come up with a if-then statement. I'm going to have a hypothesis and then come to some conclusion. All right. So, um, to come up with this, start with if. If, now we're, again, we're talking about birds here. Okay, so if, if, um, uh, uh, sorry, when we look at these, when we look at these Venn diagrams, we want to look at the, uh, at the middle of these Venn diagrams, kind of look kind of from the middle out. That's one way to look at a Venn diagram. That's one way to look at a Venn diagram. And in the middle, we have the blue jays. So that's going to give you kind of a hint. That's going to give you kind of a hint on where to start. It's going to give you a hint on where to start. Okay? So we're going to start with the blue jays. Okay? We're going to start with the blue jays. Okay? But now... It, it's it's a little bit difficult to know where to start. I can't say if a blue jay. That doesn't really make a lot of sense. If a blue jay, well, what, what is a blue jay? A blue jay is a bird, but I don't want to use bird because that's going to be part of my conclusion. If I use blue jays as part of my hypothesis, then I'm going to use birds as part of my conclusion, and I don't want birds to also be in the hypothesis and the conclusion. So again, a little bit difficult. So I got to think a little bit broader. Blue jays, birds. What are these things? What are these things? These are animals. Birds and blue jays, these are animals. So if an animal, okay, so, so we're talking about animals. Are birds, blue jays, these are all animals. If an animal is a blue jay, oh, blue jay does not have a G in it. Blue jay does not have a G in it. Get rid of that. If an animal is a blue jay, comma, then it, the animal, is a bird. If an animal is a blue jay, hypothesis, then it is a bird, conclusion. Okay, so now what was kind of difficult about that is that I had to come up with something that wasn't blatantly given to me. Now the example before, it gave us kind of all the words that we had to use, the triangles, the obtuse angles, all that kind of jazz. But now this example, it didn't give us the animal part. If an animal Okay? So I got to kind of think beyond what they give me here. I got to think beyond what they give me. I got to use a little bit of vocabulary that's not just staring me right in the face. Okay? If an animal is a blue jay, then it is a bird. Okay? If an animal is a blue jay, then it is a bird. Whereas vice versa, that's not quite true. Birds are not necessarily always blue jays. Okay? Uh, but again, that goes into the validity of the statement, which we're not worried about right now. All right, that is writing a conditional statement, an if-then statement, hypothesis and conclusion. I hope this video was informative, and I hope that it helped.